Hello there guys and gals, the Welsh Hunter here back with yet another 100% achievement and trophy guide and we have a Karaka in the fantastically classic Grim Fandango Remastered. Now this is one of my all time favourite games and it is even better than I remember. Yes, I'm old, it is called experience after all. <laughs> But <laughs> this remaster is developed by Double Fine, Shiny Shoe, published by Xbox Game Studios and is available to buy and keep for £9.99 or my advice is to get Xbox Game Pass if you don't have it because it's on there and my assumption is we'll be for a long while yet. So we play as Manny Calavero, a travel salesman in the 8th underworld of Le Hell. Uh, that's what the French would call hell for some reason. Uh, it's a normal job which soon turns into something a lot bigger. Now we're going to meet a load of characters with awesome gameplay and hilarious dialogue. As for the achievements and trophies, quite a few are missable and most we get in terms of speaking particular dialogue to certain characters, but I'll let you know what you need to pick so no worries there. The main one is though, as soon as we start the game, as you'll see, we need to go into our options and change the camera movement to tank controls. Now this is very important as we get an achievement at the end for it. Otherwise, uh, there's just a few mis uh, miscellaneous ones, but all very easily obtained. Now, in the game, I do skip all of the cutscenes and go through all the dialogue fast, but sort of still slow enough, you can see what's up and you can keep up. So this should take anywhere between sort of four to six, maybe around seven hours, depending on your gameplay, watching cutscenes, etc but it's not all bad and you will not get bored with it at all. So, as soon as we start, you press B to skip any of the cutscenes, by the way. Uh, but as soon as you see Manny in his office there, go straight into your options menu and you'll see the movement mode at the bottom there. So it's on camera relative, it should be first, so move it to tank controls. I also advise to put text mode to voice and uh, subtitles. Uh, that way you can sort of keep up with what, what sort of dialogue options, uh, voice and text. So. Uh, you can keep up with what what uh, dialogue options and everything that I'm picking, etc, etc. It just makes it just that little bit easier. So, with that being said, then we can now finally begin. So once you do that, you'll have to go back... Um, sorry, start a new game is what I'm trying to say there. There is no main menu, it just jumps straight into the game. So obviously as soon as you jump back in, just make sure that you are on tank controls. Because if you're not and you go through the whole game... Um, then you miss out the achievement in the end. So, uh, head to, to this uh, little sort of uh, cylinder type thing, get a note out of there. By the way, it's the A button, or it'll be the cross button on PlayStation to obviously interact with things. And it's the same button then to skip through dialogue. So like I say, we'll just smash that out with no problems. So tank controls, as you can see, as we just head back past the desk, go towards uh, the desk on the left and we need to pick up a bunch of playing cards. So again, it's the A button or the cross on the PlayStation to interact, and it is the B button to put things inside of you. Oh, wait, no, hang on, that was wrong. Uh, to put stuff <laughs> in your jacket pocket. So head to the back, head out of the door, and then head to the right. So my advice would be to use the D-pad to control Manny because it's sort of, it's quite awkward. So you can't just walk back and forth. You've got to actually sort of hold left to go left, hold right to go right, etc, etc. Um, so it can take a little while to get used to, but it's not its not too bad. Um, but now we need to talk to Ava, as you can see, at the, uh, the receptionist right here. We're going to be getting an achievement. Uh, all, we, all you have to do is just make sure to talk... Uh, speak through every dialogue option. So literally every single dialogue option that you can see uh, Make sure to choose that uh, Obviously make sure not to choose well. I gotta go or I gotta hit the bricks make sure not to choose that So as long as you hit every other dialogue option and exhaust it all you will get this achievement right here But as we're doing that, let me just tell you a few more buttons that you need to know about it is the right bumper to uh, Sprint with Manny will be obviously Sort of be running a lot quicker. Uh, he walks quite slow, so he'll be running quite quickly um, as much as we can through the game. So that's right bumper there. You can actually go into the remastered or original mode, which I believe is the left bumper. And then it is also the Y button to get out your inventory. The Y or the triangle on the PlayStation. So Y slash triangle, that gets out your inventory, which of course we need to use a lot. By the way, so what did you do in your life to get stuck here? That is the... Um, bumper for the achievements, that's what we're going to be getting, so again, like I said, you just go through all of the dialogue and you should get the achievement anyway. And, 
Okay, that's it. I don't know what the hell that girly noise was, but finally we've got it out. So, we'll just quickly go through again. The A button to interact, the Y button to get the inventory out, B button to put whatever you picked up, you put it inside yourself. Uh, not up inside you, I mean inside your jacket pocket, of course. I've got to stop doing that. <laughs> And then, of course, it is the right bumper to sprint. So, of course, anything else uh, that we need, I'll obviously let you know in just a bit. So, that's that achievement. You know the rules. And, like I said, the achievements are going to be, a lot of them are kind of like that. So, a lot of dialogue option achievements. So, walk around the desk now. And then, you'll see, there it is, the hole punch just next to the clock. Uh, press A to interact with it. And then, man, is just going to bang that. That's going to get us a second achievement and also obviously as you can tell the tank controls are very much like a uh, resident evil you know the very first resident evil when it came out on the playstation one style so it can be a, a little more awkward than if you were just playing it regularly but hey apparently it's what tim demanded thanks for that tim uh you you uh uh, uh no i won't say it. he's not a jerk but still bloody annoying so original remastered whatever you want but go into your inventory again press on the white button and then press the a button or the, again the x on the playstation or the cross to use your card with it and then he'll do it automatically oh my god i'm getting too old for all this talking man i wish i was as skinny as manny right here so head into the left elevator first anyway <laughs> right and then and then pretty cool cars in the Eighth Underworld. But this bit's a little bit awkward, so sort of walk forward. And it's he's basically well where we need to go is basically right at the back. So just keep walking forward. This is where it can get a bit confusing. And then just head and interact with these drawers at the left right here, and then we're gonna be talking to Manny. Uh, Manny, no, we are Manny. We're gonna be talking to Glottis. Sorry. <laughs> Close enough. But make sure to say nice hut. First, do not say the other two because that's just story related progression. So say a nice hat first, and then he'll introduce himself and then say, If you hate your job, why don't you quit? Now, saying those two should be enough to get you the achievement. Now you can just crack on and smash out the rest of the dialogue. I'm Calavera. Manny Caliber. My name's Glock. I don't get many visitors. Uh, that Mr. Herb daddy could have the rest of- Domino sent my driver- Yeah, what? Gladys. Gladys. Oh, no. I am an element. To drop- Or to change oil and- Hey, you a driver? Me? Ha! No. No, no. I don't ride them. Looks like I need an- Oh! I, uh, I, uh, I would agree. Yes? You want to be my replacement? Me? Who oh, can't rule? Come on, Gladys. I need you- No, I, I'm- You're not too big. Yeah, those day that I could alter your c uh, I'm not allowed. To. I could loot. I work. Yeah, yeah. I can't torch anything bigger than a cigarette. Hey, 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 that's my line. Get back in a snap. Everything around here is just. So a lot of the times when we're talking to people and we're going for achievement, it's usually just the sort of third dialogue option that we need to pick. But obviously I'm going to keep letting you know anyway, so ye do not get confused. Uh, confused. Now, also what I was on about with the confusion here, sometimes, obviously with the tank controls, it may look like you may have to go left or right, but literally all you're doing is just keep pressing the um, up button or the forward button or whatever you want to call it. Um, but it can... It, can take a little bit of getting used to but that's fine so when we're up the elevator we're gonna go back down uh, to the other elevator and then just head to the double doors right in front of us there so yeah as I said it you know it can take a few minutes to sort of get used to the d-pad and all the buttons that you need to be using and remember it's right bumper to sprint etc as well uh, but once you're in it it's it's absolutely 
Fine. So, now we're on the streets outside the Department of Death. And now we're going to go to the festival. Basically, there's another missable achievement that we are going to be grabbing here. If you sort of head into the middle of the tents there, you're going to see this guy practicing with used condoms. But the first thing we're going to grab is this big sausage-looking thing on the left. So make sure to grab the piece of bread, sausage, dildo, whatever your hell you think it is. That's what you're grabbing. So we'll be talking to this guy a lot. Um, because I think we basically need three different balloons. So you need to say, twist me up one of them, eh, fella? Uh, and then he sort of grabs his balls, which is, which is just rude. Mate. And then he says, bet you can't do a cat. Well, this is handy. So, what we need then is a cat. So we need to do a cat first. Like I said, there's a couple of different balloons that we need. Plus, another missable achievement will be missing. Let's get to that just a little bit later on. And that guy has a weird face. No offense, I'm not one to judge. I've got a weird face myself, so don't worry about it. <laughs> I don't mind. Uh, you've actually got to press the B button to put it away. So if, if, you, if you're holding something in your hand, you can't actually talk to him. So, say, my kid wants another balloon animal. See, so yeah, if you've got something in your hand, just press the B button to get rid of it. Now say Robert Frost, which is the very bottom option right there. So just make sure I... It's in relation to something, but I don't know. So hopefully one of you guys are going to let me know on that. So I look like an absolute tool. Nice one. So, now we need to say a dead worm. So it's never a dingo, but he's given us a used um, rubber... Um, Balloon? <laughs> you thought I was going to say something else then, didn't you? Anyway, so again, press the B button to stick that inside of yourself. My kid wants another balloon. And then say, do you have any more dead worms back there? He's going to give you another used rubber that, once again, you can stick inside yourself and have it hanging out of your jacket pocket. <laughs> uh, sorry, I will shut up now. Can I walk through your tent? And then, could you teach me how to do that? And then make sure to choose the option, bang! Now this is the one that gives us the achievement, so make sure before we leave we need one Robert Frost balloon, two dead worms, one cat, and then make sure to get that achievement for banging and blowing. Which is, <laughs> that achievement was just written for me, wasn't it? <laughs> anyway, head out there and then head to the left down the alleyway now, excuse me. Whoa. So yeah, so like I said, it does take a little bit to get used to. Head to the end, and what we're going to see is this rope. Some random rope. I'm not sure why, but hey, it's, it's video games, man. So press the A button to head on up. Because <laughs> you can't beat video game logic. I love it. And once again, there is a nice window open there for us to nip in. So we'll go ahead, just press the A button again. And you'll automatically head inside. And there's not much we're doing. We're just heading to the uh, Fallout style looking computer right there. You can have a look at his search history. I wouldn't know, to be honest, if I were you. Uh, but no, we need to choose a speci specific dialogue. And that is... Ah, oh, crap, Dave. I've just signed it yourself already. Because I'm sure that's what most bosses sound like. Tonight. You know, the really jerk off ones. So, ah, oh, crap, Dave. Sign it yourself already. I'm busy. We all know what he's busy doing, because that's what I'd be doing if I was a big boss. But I'm not good enough, so we uh, we move on. So make sure to have a look at the left side of the rope. Basically, on here, there's two ropes. If you look at the right side, he just uh, swings one up, which we don't need. So make sure that Manny was looking down at the left-hand side rope. Press A, and obviously we climb down. Then we're going to head back inside the DOD. So, yeah, just, I'm literally, I just look literally drunk for about three and a half hours of this game. Just because the controls are so bloody awkward for the first ten minutes. But you'll be fan, you'll be fan. So, we're going to head up the elevator now. I need to catch my breath. And then what we need to do, once again, remember, it's the Y button to whip out your inventory. So, we're just going to head the way round. Uh, we've got some, of course, used rubbers inside of us, so that's what Ava's referring to there. The balloons in your jacket pocket, of course. So, why 
to get out your inventory and make sure to get this receipt with the DOD and the number on it. And then obviously just press the A button, of course, to interact with Ivar. Okay, so I've just pressed the B button just to skip the cutscene. But before you have a look at the uh, dead body on the floor, make sure to press the A button again to interact with the three living people right here with the oh, creepy ass faces. Again, this is before you uh, interact with the body on the floor. So, you'll hear that noise like that, you know, that shit yourself one, which I would to be fair. Um, just, yeah, so do with all three, that'll get the scaring the living achievement. And then what you can do then is go into your inventory and whap out your big old black long thing. Which of course is your scythe, with a bit of silver polished on the end there, nice and polished. Whap that open then, and we're just going to have a Danny DeVito looking kind of guy. Sadly, Danny DeVito did die, and now we've got him right here, which is a shame. So yeah, obviously I'll tell you when I skip cutscenes because it may be a bit sort of disorientating and confusing. So apologies if you're a bit like, don't be a jerk, I was watching that. But of course, it's definitely worth watching the cutscenes anyway, but I've skipped them just to save a little bit of time. So, there we go. So make sure, obviously, you've, you have got the scaring the living achievement before we head on. Now we're going to talk to Ava again. No achievement or anything to miss here, so just blast through all of the dialogue options. Now we're going to take a break and have a drink. My driver. Manny, you know what? Stop playing dumb just to f Manny if you don't. Right. So now head back on yourself to Ava's desk and then go into the room with the sort of blue wall, if you can just see there. And this is our rival, love rival, Dommy, who is, you know, he's your typical sucking the boss off kind of jerk guy. Uh, thinks he's better than you, which he is. But, you know, that's fine. You've probably got a bigger wang as well. Do skeletons have wangs? I'm not too sure. Anyway, what we need to do is... There's no achievement tied to this, so basically what we're going to be doing is just smashing through all the dialogue options until Manny's like, I've had enough. Up your guts. I'm at it, yeah. I want to ask you a question. Shoot. Is it hard to kiss up to the bar? Hey, I got all the lip. I get it from you. What did you do to get... You mean, what's my secret to... No, I mean, how did you screw... What sin did you commit, and how long are you... Well, I could easily ask the sin, but I don't know the answer. Well, how convenient, then. Can I have one of your clients? Sure, Cap. Just as soon as I get one, I can handle anything, especially if that's your best... Why do you get all the good clients? You're asking... You should be taking a good... No, thanks. I don't... I want to tell you something. Good. There's no reason for you to... You know, this used to be my office. Yeah, I found your name on some... I think you're up to... Yeah, I'm up to about... <laughs> I want my office... Don't worry, you'll have years... I think we should team up. Oh, Manny, I could never be partners with... So oh, come on, I've seen you... I want to punch you in the mouth. Oh, no. What happened? Blacked out on the whole thing. Maybe you should switch. Well, you sound pretty out of breath. Always a play. So, no, that one's over with. We're going to leave him with his skinny bone arms. We're going to... We are going to take a drink. I don't know if this is entirely necessary. It's probably not. But after the stress of getting no clients and being fired... Uh, being threatened with being fired. God damn, we need to steal his drink. We also need to steal a few more things, but we're going to come back later on. So, head back to Ava's desk at the minute, but we are going just past that, and we're heading back downstairs. And what, who are we going to see? Um, as soon as we're out of here, we're going to have a little cutscene with Brenna. Or, or Brennis. What, what's his name? Uh, his name is actually Brennis, yeah. But Brenna sounds more hilarious. Huh? You think you're... No. Good. So when Brynna the monster pops off, we're going to head to the right hand side and we're just going through the open door. There's a fire extinguisher on the wall right here which we're going to grab. And we're going to be a douche and we're going to smash up that machine a little bit later on with complete ingenuity. But again, we're leaving that for a little bit later on. 
So head forward and we go into the other side now to the left through that open door. And we need to fill up our used rubbers um, with these two different bits of liquid here. So obviously this is why we got the two dead. <laughs> it does look like what you think it looks like. Because it probably is in the 8th Underworld. So make sure again that when you're interacting with stuff, obviously make sure that Manny is looking at that particular thin thing. So he's looking at the blue one first and then the yellow slash orange, whatever the hell colour that is later. Uh, just go through your inventory until you get to the dead used rubber. Dead worm! Stop saying used rubber. It sounds wrong. But it sounds so right. Ooh. So as long as you've got the two different ones, uh, the two different liquids filled it, filling the balloons up, then we are good to go. Because basically where we're going to be heading now is back up to our office. Now for a guy that needs to spend a lot of time in his office, we're not really spending a lot of time in our office. It's more of a sort of jackass prank style type of view, which you can't beat. You can't beat it. Especially when sort of Johnny Knoxville and Chris Pontius sort of whips his trousers off and... Just bulge in your face and ah, flappy. Anyway, back <laughs> back in our room, or our office, sorry. Go back to where we were at the very beginning of the game, at the very back of the room. Uh, press Y to get your inventory out, and then use the two balloons that we filled up with the liquid. With the hot, sticky liquid. Shove it down the hole. And then this little cutscene will play. And then just do the same then with the next used rubber which we filled with our hot, sticky liquid. You can just shove that straight down the hole as well. <laughs> it's making it's making it too easy. Innuendos. So, we're going to be heading back down to the mail room now. So, as good as this game is, there are a lot of sort of walking back and forth, especially in the second year. Or yeah, you know, I, you know, I can't say year, 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 and year because everyone else apart from the Welsh might not understand. So head down to the main elevator, go back into the <laughs> mail room, which of course is on the right hand side. Once we are down in the lobby here, so two the right through the open door, and then Brynna is going to be inside. Now we are coming to a missable achievement, but first of all, make sure to interact with the door. Very important, this one. And um, what, it, what it's going to do is lock it. Weirdly, but it all does make sense. So I haven't just done it for a laugh. We actually need to do that. So again, we're going to talk to Brynna right here. This is the right idea. They think it is funny. I'd like to jam their tubes with packing material. See how... Uh, choose who would do a terrible thing like this. Like I said, a lot of the time we will be going for the sort of third dialogue option. Who would do a terrible thing like this? And then for the achievement, just say, just curious, how would you get in there? <laughs> he gives us a sarcastic response, but that will be enough for the achievement, which we will unlock. So, now you can just blast through the old dialogue. It's just temporarily unavailable. So how long is it? With a job like probably ours. Or until no one's around. Whichever co Can I squeeze in? Are you kidding? No one's allowed. What's so special about I, sir, am an... Yeah, yeah. You were given one purpose, one... No. And put me... You know, I really think it's... Oh, it's clean enough to run. I'm just gotta cover my... Yes, you do. Say, uh, I got a lot of... Hey. <laughs> <laughs> butt crack and a butt scratch. I don't think there's anything funnier in cartoons than a butt crack and a butt scratch. So, <laughs> anyway, uh, we'll get the achievement after the dialogue options. By the way, one more quick thing before we head on. It's definitely worth making every new year, sort of new chapter, it's definitely worth making a manual save just in case um, something may unlock uh, or not unlock or something may glitch out. So, it's always worth doing that. Um, but just head out of the room, and this cutscene's gonna play, and then we're able to go back in. But of course, because we locked the door, quote unquote, from the outside, Brynna is gonna smash it shut, but he doesn't realize that it's still open. So, we are the tactical geniuses, and Brynna is stupid. 
which makes it all worthwhile for us. So now we can head back in. Um, also, just another thing with the saves, there are a lot of auto saves, um, so don't worry, you don't actually have to start from the very beginning, but it's always worth having a manual save from the sort of beginning of the year, or the chapter anyway, just to be safe in case something has glitched out and you have to go through a certain portion, or you've missed something and you have to go through a certain section again. So, now that that bit's out of the way, just to let you know, uh, go into your inventory, again, wide button of course, and get out the card which you used with the hole punch earlier on, the Ace of Spades. The Ace of Spades! Ah, what's this going to do? Mercedes Colomar, this is going to get us a, a nice shiny new client which Domino can shove up his butt. That's really good. I think you're it Gladys, are you loco? What got into you? I was a company. That's a lot of responsibility. What makes you think I've been Miss Colomar? Meche. Meche. I can end in your file here. We're so we are coming up to yet another missable achievement as we talk to Meche. Colomar, right here. Um, now, again, this is the sort of third dialogue option stuff that we're going to. That we're going to be going through even so make sure to pick anything about your past you haven't told me and then choose mean to animals yeah thank you don't care ever cheated on your taxes sorry Meche, you're hot for a skeleton but yeah you know we need we need the client man we need the mono we need the mula huh uh, ever cheated on your husband? And the tequila. Tequila! Um, litter? Litter. Work with me, Meche. Give me some dirt. And then basically that is the one that unlocks the achievement. So once again, you can now smash through the dialogue knowing very well, and I'm much happier that you are 15 G's richer. I have to confess, I never care. Not even a teensy. Maybe I just wasn't. I give up. Don't say that. Are you sure you're. Yes. Would you like to see my birthmark? Sure. Where is it? It's wherever you guys put my skin. Excuse me. But I have to go straighten this mess out. Sorry to be so much trouble, Mr. Calavera. It's no trouble. But please, call me Manny. So now we're simply going to head back toward Ava's desk, but our boss is going to be pissed off at us. Which, to be fair, since we're not actually doing anything, we're not actually doing our job, that's pretty understandable, even though, uh, you know, the guy's a jerk-off. But we're going to get a little cutscene, and we're going to end up in the very, very downstairs. <laughs> Look at his hair. Look at his little haircut. That's hilarious. Like mine, but I'm balding on top too. So sad. So all we need to do then is just interact with the door. And we are basically going to have a little conversation with Secret McSecret Pants right here. So for the majority of conversations, you can actually just smash through it. But sometimes, like with this one, just copy the same exact ones that I do. Again, it is usually the third dialogue option. Um, but we need to get to a point where we say the DoD runs a crooked game and I intend to prove it. But again, for the majority of the time, like I said, you can just smash through it, but I'll always let you know if there's certain ones that you have to pick, etc. Horrifying boots, screaming until your mouth and the bulbs sprout in your eyes, leaving you nothing but a ba- Are you done? Yes. No, I'm not. I'm thinking about getting out and get the only way out, Manuel. If you are truly still loyal to this company, the management might hear and stick you right- The DOD runs a crooked game, and I intend to prove it. You would do that? That could cause... I'm gonna blow the lid off. Young man, you are an enemy of the... Welcome to the Salvador Limones and guest. Where are you taking me? To the headquarters of the LSA. So, we got a new best buddy, Salvador Limones. He is hardcore and cool as flirk. 
Fluck, I said, by the way, that's a new word, right? So, here is Ava, who's not actually a receptionist. She is a spy, which... Spoiler! Oh, secretary, sorry, not a receptionist. It's all different in America and stuff, isn't it? Now, I'm not actually sure if this missable achievement is actually missable. So, I start off just going through the third set of dialogue options once again. And I keep going through until... The, I get the only one that's left is the any messages for me. That's actually the one that will give us the join or die again achievement. But like I said, you can do it first, I think, if you want just to get the achievement out of the way. Um, but it's always worth just um, smashing through the rest of the dialogue beforehand anyway. And then leaving that for last. And then that will unlock you the achievement and get rid of all the dialogue options anyway. So apologies if that was a bit confusing then. Doesn't Ava being a spy make it a little sexier, huh? Man, although, they, although they are still skeletons, so it's probably a bit weird. Never mind. Yes. But I'm already... Again! So, you won't help me out of here. Sorry. I'll help you out, but not your teeth. Think it over. So, once we receive that message from Ava, just opposite of where Ava is, we're gonna now speak to Sal Limones. Again, interact using the A button. And again, what I do is just use the third dialogue option. Uh, just keep just keep doing that. Um, instead of saying, you know, okay, I'm ready, let's go. This is the sort of bottom option. And what he's gonna do is basically tell us a story of how we're going to steal the number nine ticket. So as long as you don't say, okay, I'm in, or I'm off, then he's gonna tell you the story, and then you can just go from there. And this is the story. Is that someone is profiting. Money's not important here. You want to get out, money. But for some people, this they have decided to seek. What do you want from I'm going to build an underground army. A communication will become vital as we we'll need messengers. You want me to be your messenger? No, Manuel. Our numbers are history shows only one mess. Carry your pe If I grab some pigeons off the No, I need to raise them from I need you to bring you're keeping me here. Why are you still? Go get me an. Now that's all the briefing you need, soldier. Viva la revolución! So there's the achievement. Now we can head back upstairs. <laughs> Someone is profiting. Good God, I wish I was profiting. I'm so poor. I don't even have a computer. Well, of course, that's a lie because how else would I have done this? But we're not going back out to the alleyway, sorry. We're going back up to where we went into the boss's room earlier on. So head up uh, back where the rope is, and then go, of course press A to climb back up there. I mean, damn man for a skeleton with no muscle in his arms, he can climb a bloody rope. Uh, so we're going to head <laughs> all the way around the ledge to the end window. That's going to be Dom's office, so interact with that, and we're going to climb in. Yeah, I've... Apparently I go to the gym, I can't, I can't climb up ropes and that, that's just, that's just for ridiculously awesome people. So first thing we're going to do is have a look in Dom's desk, um, to the right of his chair, there's going to be a little drawer, and there's going to be a piece of green coral, coral, I know, I know how Americans and uh, British people like to say coral, and coral, the joke's there somewhere, but anyway, uh, <laughs> once we're done with that, press B to put it in your jacket pocket, and then just keep uh, pressing A right next to his computer. Uh, big big uh, Manny here is going to keep trying to guess and just keep doing it until the achievement pops, which should be something like arrogant fraud doesn't work, <laughs> Mr. D. <laughs> that means two things, potentially. So much for that. Arrogant fraud doesn't work. Why would why would it be Ava Manny if you're not in love, hmm, bruh? Anyway, you should get that achievement, and again, you don't really necessarily have to take a drink here, but it's stressful work, all this uh, non-working and sneaking around and stuff. So take a drink, take two if you want. Uh, but what we're gonna need is retainers on top of this punching bag. So press the A button to interact with the punching bag. You'll have to do it three times. Yeah, uh, Manny, you just look you just look really pathetic. I'm just joking, because that looks like me. Anyway, ooh, so, 
Um, yes, we have just picked up Dom's dirty retainers and possibly have these skelly aids now because Dom looks like the kind of guy to go down on a $5 hooker and not brush his teeth till the next day because the vodka or gin will get it clean. But hey, it is what we need for the Viva Le Revolution. So sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. $5 hookers and stuff. Nah, they can't be all bad, can they? Just a bit acidy in the old uh, nether regions, I expect. Anyway, so make sure Manny's looking at the right side of the rope now. Uh, remember what I said earlier? To climb down, you have to look at the left side of the rope. We need to be looking at the right side. He brings up this rope. We actually need to go into our inventory, pressing the Y button, and get out the green piece of coral that we found earlier. And it makes this sort of noise in case you're wondering what it is. That genuinely just... I don't... I don't even know what that looks like. A coral, I suppose. So, press A to interact with the rope, with the coral, and then that'll get us a little zip line that we can zip ourselves across. Climb, Manny! Climb! So that is what we're actually doing. So we've climbed up the ladder. Now, again, press forward to sort of go forward, even though it looks like you need to press the down button to come back. Yeah, it's, it's weird, these whole tank controls things. But hopefully, you know, nearly 40 minutes in, hopefully you should be used to it by now. But we're going to be getting another achievement here as well, very missable. So get out the Robert Frost Balloon, which... I'll tell you which one it is. It's this one. It's... Whatever the hell that is, it kind of looks like a weird-ass pretzel or something. Just uh, interact with the birds, go up to it, and then that will get you the Rent New Pigeons. It's Robert Frost achievement. So, of course, remember to do that before we do what we need to do. So, next we need to get out the cat balloon. There it is, the one that looks like a cat. Pretty obvious. Unless you've never seen a cat before, then... Man, how are you following this guide? Anyway. <laughs> then what we need to do is get that little bit of... Uh, Sneaky snossage. So there we go. Get the snossage out that we got a little bit earlier on, and then interact with it with the cat balloon, and that is going to make some of these skelly birds going to pop over. That's going to pop. They're going to shut themselves, and then we can finally grab some eggs. Speaking of eggs, it is my birthday today at this current point of recording, 20th of January, 2021. 31 today! Woo! Uh, so I might go make some breakfast eggs now. But nah, I'll just keep on recording, screw it. So, obviously we've just headed back down. We're going to look at the left side of the rope now because we are going to be heading back down. Um, and you obviously think that we... What the obvious thing might be is that we're going to go back down to where uh, Ava and Sal are, but we're not actually going to be doing that. We're going to be heading <laughs> back into the alleyway when we get there eventually, and then head into the sort of open doorway on the left and head back down into sort of Glottis's offices. Hmm. It was a rhyme and I didn't poet. Know it. Ah, oh, crap it. Hey, what did they do with Gladys? So when we're here, get inside yourself, go into your inventory and get out Dom's aid, skelly aid infected um, retainers there. And then just use it on this machine on the table. And what's going to be even worse now is Manny's going to get skelly aids in his mouth. So turn away from the machine and then press the A button to interact with it and he's going to actually eat it. So now he's got that $5 hooker germs on him, and he doesn't brush his teeth for the rest of the game, so... Well, the gin will get rid of that, it's fine, it's fine, that's a thing, right? Yeah, it's fine. 
So, now we are actually going to be heading back up, and we are now actually going to be going, going, to, uh, going, to be going down to where Ava and Sal are. So make sure to interact with the leftmost sort of um, picture or whatever the bloody hell that is, the whatever, the, the one with the blue eye. So get out the blue eye, luckily it's not pink eye, although they did miss a trick with that, they could have done a pink eye <laughs> picture there, but it is what it is. Uh, we're basically now coming to the end of this sort of first little section of the game, so go ahead and speak to Big Sal. Uh, obviously on the right. He seems to be very interested in not looking anywhere else. Uh, so he's got, so he's got the eggs. Uh, if it doesn't work, go into your inventory and just get the eggs out and then speak to Sal. So that's only if it doesn't do it automatically. And then we're going to go and speak to Ava. You can now, ugh, you are going to now give her the um, five dollar hooker Dom's retainers, which we've obviously already stuck in our mouth as well for disgustingness. And this bit is basically ending now. Now we're going to go and find Glottis. With the cutscene coming up. Let me be a. You must go to the town of Rubacaba, my friend. If you want to find your lost soul. That was some tunnel. I'm on the. God is why are you Manny? Oh they fired me what? Me too, but you don't understand I was created just to do that It's like they read and pull and through So, welcome to the 8th Underworld, I guess, where you can um, rip out your heart and just take a nap because you've got about three in there or something. Happy days, I'd be happy with that. Ugh, look at them freaking things. Now imagine one of them spider bat things creeping and crawling on you in the middle of the night. You'd just burn your house down, wouldn't you, really? Uh, so anyway, you see these <laughs> pile of bones on the floor? You only need to pick up three, but I pick up four, you know, just in case. Uh, but it is definitely only three that you need. Now there are another pile of bones on a bridge a little bit later on that we can get, but it's obviously just worth picking them all up now. Pick up four, just, just to be on the safe side because, you know, it is always a just in case. Um, so now we're going to get out one of those bones, make sure not to rip out one of your own rib cage bones. And then just interact with the big spider web. So they're not interested, so what we're going to do instead is get out your big black long thing, your scythe, your polished, uh, polished end. The one with the polished end, of course, and then interact with the spider web again. And instead of ripping the spider, that's a that is a strong ass web as well. I suppose. I suppose if you got if you're a spider bat, creeping, massive bloody thing, then uh, you're gonna make strong webs. So that basically gets the uh, Glottis's heart back to him. So we're just gonna head back to where Glottis is, where we came. And there it is. So now we just interact with the heart and we're going to shove it right back inside Glottis now. No lube, no nothing. I assure you the missing woman will be found. I will personally try. Right, so this is a cutscene that we can skip. Something big happens in it, so I'll let you um, just take a watch. I'd be super surprised by it. Uh, now, to get in Glottis' car, you've just got to press the A button, sort of near towards the back there. Uh, this bit is automatic, and then you've got to actually drive yourself, which you can see because 
My driving and my walking in this game resembles that of a seven-day drunkard bender session. Yes, but I can't actually walk properly and I haven't got a clue what's going on. But somehow, I still manage to sneak through life. So of course, press A to get off as well. And this is a first sort of complicated puzzle. There's not too many of these in the game, but this is the first sort of complicated one that we need. Uh, but before we do this, uh, we need to actually speak to Glottis to get another missable achievement. So as soon as you get that little bit of auto save there, uh, before you interact with the machine, go ahead and speak to Glottis. Uh, again, just to get the uh, missable achievement there. Sorry, my words today are absolutely shocking. I'm seemingly drunk without actually drinking. <laughs> Is that why the town's huh? Maybe so. This place gives me the creep. I'm ready to. So when we got that, then now we can actually turn the machine off, and then basically Glottis is going to climb up on the tree. Now, what we need to do, you see the gears that are currently moving on the tree at the minute. We need to use the wheelbarrow to pinch the cables, the two in the middle. Uh, don't worry about the two on the very left and the very right. But the aim of the game is to actually knock the tree over. So to do this, as I said, we need to use the wheelbarrow to pinch the cables that link the tree to the machine. So they're the ones in the middle. But each cable corresponds to one of the gears on the tree. So what we need to do then, to knock over the tree, you need to make the gears on the right side of the tree move just after the ones on the left. So when the one on the right moves, then you move the wheelbarrow onto the left. It's... It's quite tricky to explain, um, but the key here is to make sure that the tree is swaying from side to side. So you need both gears on the right side going at the same time, and the both gears on the left side going at the same time. So again, it's, it's kind of an awkward one to explain. But just as the gear contracts, then you need to move it over to the other side. So it's just... Uh, yeah, it's, it's probably... You'll, you will get a good feel for it, but... It is just after the gear contracts, or either on the left or right side. So, so say the one on the uh, the gear on the left contracts, then you move it over to the right side, and vice versa. And then hopefully that should get both of them all moving at the same time. So the two on the left at the same time, and then the two on the right at the same time. When you know you've done it right, a cutscene will appear. Um, in the end, I think I just end up going... <laughs> I try, I try doing a little bit of good tactics with it. I end up just going a little bit mad, to be honest. And somehow that worked for me. So if it does start getting a little frustrating, just sort of kind of button mash it. If you can. I'm, so, I'm very sorry. It's, it's really pathetic advice, to be honest. But it's a tricky one to explain. And it's probably just better to actually do it. Just watch and do. I'm so sorry. So with that being explained perfectly, with uh, nothing, no interruptions and nothing happening and nothing went wrong and you got that easily as pie, obviously, uh, we can now move on. So exit out of the car and then sort of head down past Glottis, sort of uh, northwards. And then uh, press A to interact with this sign, the arrow sign is what we're going to need here. This is basically another puzzle that we're going to do. Luckily, it's a lot easier than the last one that we just did. So, uh, <laughs> man, Glottis really loves driving. But go past Glottis, up sort of south on the left-hand side of the, of the two uh, openings right there. Um, basically, what you need to do now is find a secret opening. Now, what this does, you can sort of place the arrow anywhere, and it'll point in the direction that it'll actually go. So I'll just show you here, uh, just in case. So we'll place it down, and the arrow's going to sort of spin around and say, whoop just down a little bit so that's where we need to go so where we need to go the, as you can see there's just like a slight dark patch just a little bit down from where we are on the left hand side 
Um, it's it's pretty obvious when you know sort of where we're going and where I end up placing it. But it's sort of this little dark spot right here. Uh, but that is the spot. That's going to open up the secret tunnel and that is going to get us going. Man, we are so key. Hey, I know what Loteria is. That's lottery, right? Yes! I am now an official Mexican because I know what Loteria means. I am part of the crew now. Thank you very much. Thank you for your all your support, my Mexican friends. So happy to be part of the team. <laughs> and your wonderful country. So, we are going back... What, what, what the hell am I on about again? So, we're going back to the car. We're going to climb back on. And now we're actually going to drive down into the secret tunnel. I mean, that would, probably would be fairly obvious, uh, since there's nowhere else to go. Wicked music. that sign so it's a little bit tricky uh, to see yourself on the back there um, as soon as Glottis's big fat head gets out of the way then you can see where you're at and then we can finally move down so interact with this sign in the sort of bottom right hand corner uh, inter interact with it basically that's going to give us a key but we are coming up to the point now where these three bones come in absolute handy Can't pass up a no- So then head down from where we are and we're going to see a door that we can go through. But the bridge, which has a whole bunch of human skulls and skelly skulls and human bones and skelly, skelly bones. Um, yeah, it's got three fire infused beavers on it, which is a nice touch. Very nice touch for the Eighth Underworld. But remember, if you end up sort of running out of bones, if you do end up sort of... Uh, messing up or whatever here you can actually collect some of these bones off this bridge so don't worry if you end up missing out or messing up this bit's automatic by the way he chases us out because you don't want your ass eaten by a fire breathing beaver <laughs> beaver anyway head to the gap go back in head to the la uh, gap on the left of where the beavers are Honestly, I promise, keep going and you will eventually come down to this little tar pit right here. So what we need to do, the, the timing is uh, quite important here, but it's not too bad. So go to the tar pit first, and then what we're going to do is throw a bone actually into the tar pit. Now this is the reason that we need three bones. So throw it in. Again, uh, that bit will do it automatically. And then go into your inventory and get your fire extinguisher out. You should have a fire extinguisher somewhere. There it is. Now, as soon as the beaver screams that uh, or roars or whatever, like now, now is the time to use the fire extinguisher, and that should douse out the fire, killing the beaver, and you don't get your beaver eaten out by a beaver. And the same thing's going to happen again. So it's just throw your bone in the tar, and again, leave it about one second after the beaver roars, and then that should be. Plenty enough then for the uh, to douse him out, and your ass doesn't get eaten. Well, it depends what you're into, really. But again, like I said, if you do end up missing um, one of the beavers, I'm not actually sure if they just die anyway. 
Um, but if you need a bone that you can always get what another one off the bridge. So once you've killed off all three beavers and the uh, skelly activist, animal activists get all pissed off with us, we can now actually head back. We're not actually going to go over the bridge, we're going to head back, have a look at this sort of little uh, keyhole on the left hand side, just by the door, use the key with it, and then we're going to get Big Glot to get us through. Simples. This outer gate is huge. I'll need Glottis to open it. Manny, I don't know if I like driving over people. They can't feel it, they're dead. What dead? That's because you and my friends. Aww. So again, I've just skipped the cutscene with the B button, but that would have been a cutscene. Uh, before we head up the stairs, head all the way out to the right, and then another cutscene's gonna happen where somehow we fall off the edge. <laughs> Because we are steam bobs, like proper off our nut, apparently. You gotta watch your step around here. Rubicabe ain't the quaint little port town. Oh, hell, pardon me whilst I. I promise I'll lay off the sniff and I won't fall off any more cliffs, but thanks for rescuing me. And can skeletons get cold? I didn't know they could get cold. Anyway, now we are actually gonna head up the stairs. And we're going to head into the only entrance that we can go, and we're going to find Le Celso. His name is just Celso, it's not Le. But we are going to be uh, getting another missable achievement right here as well. And what we're going to do once again is be using the third dialogue option for the majority. So, what are you doing here? I mean, he did die, so I suppose that's why. Uh, you must love her very much, Celso. Then choose, how do you know your wife hasn't gone ahead of you? Because she's probably, uh, you know, getting all a skelly dick. Um, and then find, uh, I'll help you find your wife. <laughs> what did she look like? She's on, she's on the 8th Underworld orgy boat she is, mate, I tell you. That's why she's gone ahead of you. And then choose, so, know a good place to stay in town. The orgy boat would be good. I'm, I'd be up for that. And then choose, can you get me a job here? Now that is the one that should now get us the achievement. When he says we only have one mop. So now you can just blast through the rest of the dialogue options and the achievement unlock shortly after. See, I'm such a help. I'm here to reclaim that walking stick. I broke it over the... I'm sorry, man. Right. She'll be the one... So then we are almost finally done with year one slash chapter one, uh, chapter one or year one with chapter one. Uh, we're going to go back down Glottis and speak to Valesco. Now again, like I said, if you want to save just before you always have these sort of missable achievement conversations, it's always worth doing just in case you end up missing out or messing up accidentally. Uh, but what we need to be doing now is asking Valesco about his eye patch. So as soon as Glottis' 80,000 teeth mouth shushes for a minute. Dry dock the bone wagon. Well, if that isn't a bloody innuendo, I don't know what is. Anyway, choose how do you get around here with all the mist, which is the third dialogue option. Oh, man. And then for the next one, we're going to be choosing... Can I just ask, what is under the eye patch? When you ask that, that is what will unlock the achievement, which will unlock uh, just shortly after the conversation ends. I might be here a while. Oh, there's... <laughs> We're here looking for a woman named Mercedes. I'm uh, not too... Did she have any distinguishing marks? Not that she showed me. Well, like I said... <laughs> hey, Manny! We were in the middle of a conversation! Hey, hey! 
So the achievement unlocks, but we're not quite done with Velasco yet. So whip out your inventory and get out the picture of Celso's wife. Now, Celso looks about a thousand years old, but Celso's wife seems younger. So I'm sorry to say she is definitely on that orgy boat. Um, so yeah, how do you know she sailed out of here? And then what we're going to basically do is just... Uh, we've got a port log now from Valesco, so we're going to go back up, give that port log to Valesco, and that will be the end of the first year, year, year. I can't say year properly, It's it's got to be a Welsh year, sorry. Uh, <laughs> slash chapter one. I just can't do it. Are you sure I can? There's a. Celso, your wife sailed out of here two months. It's all in there. Oh, Manny. Forget about her. Have you forgotten? I'm going after her. You take over my. This map at least will never let. That compass in the handle will. <laughs> 